Okay, welcome to the first episode of the Distro Spin. I've been putting it off all day because there's a mad storm going on and I just don't want to pick up too much wind, but we're going to do it. So let's spin the wheel and let's see what we got to use. Huh, Voyager. Okay, cool. Right, so I've got to download everything like that. So sort of download the ISO and then we'll be back on Voyager. Okay, that's all downloaded now. I do believe we've got Voyager the Gaming Edition 19.10. Um, it's 2.4 gig size and it's just been DD to USB. So we're going to jump over to the laptop now and install it straight onto that and we'll run that through the capture card so we can see it all together. Okay, here we are at the live desktop. I just want to clarify this isn't the gaming edition. This is just their, I think it's their main version, Voyager GNOME. The reason why I wasn't quite sure is because it's quite confusing actually. They've got quite a few versions for you to download. Um, so we've got this one here, which is the 19.10 Voyager ISO, which is as the name would suggest, based on Ubuntu 19.10. Um, I'm not going to comment on what it looks like right now. Oh, hot corner, don't like that. Right, we're going to install it straight onto the disk, and then we'll, um, you know, we'll get into it after it's installed. So we'll just run through the installer together. Continue. We're going to go for English UK, like always. I didn't test my keyboard, though. Let me go back. Always test my keyboard. No, oh. Perfect, and I always test it with those two keys as well. Right, we're going to go for the normal installation, and we're going to go for that as well, and we're going to click continue. I'm not sure what's installed on this laptop at the moment, actually. I wonder what it's going to pick up. Ah, okay. So we're just going to do a straight erase, disk, and install. So let's go. It's also got the ZFS there as well. So let's go to install now. So what's that going to do? One ESP and the next four. That's fine. Let's go to continue. Choose your location. Type in your user account and password. Um, because I won't be using this laptop. Well, I'll, apart from videos, we go straight for login automatically. So we go to continue. Okay, cool. When that's done, I shall be back booted off disk. Okay, we are all installed. So let's just um, let's let it do this little update in the background. Click install now. Right. So let's start with the top bar. We've got two buttons here and a hot corner, which I will disable. I don't like the hot corners. So clicking this one is your this is just your desktop switcher, your activities overview, and then clicking that one will show your applications, and then you have frequent and all at the bottom there. And then we have a terminal icon, which is a drop down terminal. Okay, cool. So if I was to do Control Alt T, okay, so I've still got the standard terminal as well. This is a radio widget of some extension of some kind that I'm not familiar with. And here's a weather widget. Where's it saying I am? Oh, I have no idea what that's saying there. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm, I'm definitely not there, but let's leave it there anyway. Okay, here's your times and stuff. All right, what have we got here? So we've got a few toggles here for your sound, um, microphone, and other inputs. And then you've got your Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, login, log out, names, and everything else. Almost this. So clicking that will open the Tweaks application. Okay, interesting. So it has Tweaks installed out of the box. So let's go into the Tweaks now and sort of remark on what they've done with this gnome installation because i can already see that it's a dash to dock kind of affair with a few other things right so we've got configure the activities button at the top panel select an icon change the text to disable hot corner right let's disable hot corner with this um remove activities button disable hot corner so now no hot corner perfect right let's close that um, blur. Apply a blur effect to GNOME Shell UI. Utilities caffeine. Nice to see caffeine. Now, why is it not in the bar here? I can't see caffeine in the. Um, hmm. Usually you'd see um, like a little coffee cup up here. Unless he's got it somewhere else. No. Let's turn it on and off. No, I still can't see it appearing anywhere. There we go, show caffeine in top panel. So where is it showing it then? Oh, I don't know. There you go, so there's your little caffeine cup. So if you wanted to sort of disable screensaver and auto suspend and stuff, you just click that and it will keep everything open for you. 
Right, so is that all it's got in the extensions? Oh no, we've got some more. Disconnect Wi-Fi, frippery move clock's a personal favourite of mine, frippery move clock. Um, GS Connect, internet radio, internet speed meter. Let's have a little bit of what it's like. Um, don't see it. Hmm? Keep your files safe, back up a regularly important documents, data settings can be protected, blah, blah, blah. Was it used Deja? Yep, so it uses Deja Dup. Deja Vu is your backup, which you can do backups over sort of networks and storage drives like that. Let's close that. So that was, where were we? That just popped up, didn't it? Okay, let's keep going. Right, so the internet speed meter, open weather, which is the weather widget we just saw. Quant search, search directly from Gnome Shell. Hmm, I think we'll probably turn that one off. Right, let's keep going. Tweaks in system menu, put Gnome tweaks in a system menu. So that's how we have tweaks there, interesting. Let's keep it moving. So they've disabled Ubuntu Dock, because as I say, they've got dash to dock in its place. User themes, web search provider, search the web directly from Gnome Show Overview. No, thank you. Quake mode, drop down mode for any application. Hmm, that's quite cool actually. I've not actually used this before. Quake mode for any application. Nice. Cool. So the toggle is F1. Um, let's see what happens if we press F1. There you go. So that's how you get your your little drop down terminal. That's, I, I quite like that. Right, so that's all of the tweaks. Let's see what applications it comes installed with. I'll tell you what, we've not quite finished on the desktop, so we've got a little, I'm going to assume that's a conky widget. I'll tell you what, let's have a look. If it disappears, it's conky. There we go. So it has conky sort of configured out of the box with a nice little widget there for you as well. So now let's look at the applications and our update is also finished. So in accessories we have archive manager, backups, books, gnome disks, documents, files, which is Nautilus, fonts, help, maps, gnome maps, notes, password, screenshot, USB image writer, USB stick form, not sure what that finishes, to do, text editor, text info and show desktop. <clears throat> And then you've got calculator and characters, and in your games folder you have 2048, Solitaire, Chess, Mahjong, Minds, and Sudoku. And then graphics you have Document Scanner, Document Viewer, GIMP, Image Viewer, Image Magic, LibreOffice, Draw, and Shotwell. And then in Internet you have Corebird, Firefox, Pigeon, Remina, Thunderbird, and Transmission. And there's your logs file uh, application there. And then in Office, you've got the full LibreOffice suite as well as Document Viewer. And then in the Sound and Video, you have Cheese, Gnome Twitch. I've not actually seen that before. Let's open Gnome Twitch up. Huh. That's quite a good idea, actually. Okay, let's close that and keep going. Phone's just gone on a mad one. Right, we was in sound and video, wasn't we? So that's Gnome Twitch, Kazam, which is a screen recorder, Music, Pit View, which is a video editor. Not one I've spent too much time with, though. Um, Pulse Effects, Rhythm Box, SM Tube, and Videos. And then in the System Tools, you have Additional Drivers, Bleach Bit. Bleach Bit's quite a cool application for sort of like cleaning unnecessary, unused things. So you could sort of, you know, a lot of it can be done in the terminal, but it's, you know, it's fairly straightforward just to do that, go clean, and it'll do that for you and then you can do sort of cache and things of Firefox etc. So let's leave that closed. Um, that was system tools, so that was bleach bit and we've got boot repair, box voyager, I'm not too sure what that is. Night mode, net speed, walls voyager, extension gnome, conky control. Huh, let's go for night mode. Dark mode? <laughs> Ah, look at that. Oh, well, that's not too bad, actually. That's not too bad of an idea. Right, we'll leave it on dark. No, we won't. What's it doing? Dark mode, please. Okay. Right, I'm going to leave it on dark mode. What? Go away, Box Voyager. <laughs> all right, okay. So that was all of the applications. I'm going to double check that was all of the applications. So we was in Box Voyager. You've got Decomp Editor as well, because they probably use that to edit sort of dash to panel and a few other things. You've got GDB to install your dev packages, you've got OS uninstaller, hmm, let's just have a look at this, I've got nothing else for it to uninstall, but scanning systems, hmm, interesting, right, let's get back to applications, 
and we got to do, 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 do gday we got a grub customizer input do, do, do. okay cool you've also got startup disk creator there as well and it comes with tweaks out of the box and then you've got the ubuntu store right i'm going to see how much ram we've managed to accumulate and use just by having a look around no htop installed so we're going to install htop and then we're also going to check to see whether it's got what are you talking about it certainly is let me just do an update I'm trying to tell me there's no htop <laughs> it's just because we didn't update there we go and it will work now there you go <clears throat> Right, so let's run htop. So we're using 1.5 gig out of 16 and CPU utilizations at you know anywhere between zero and 5% on each core there. What I wanna do is also see if it's got snaps and flat packs installed. So snap list, what have we got? So yeah, we've got snaps installed out of the box and let's try flat pack now. Okay, so flat pack's not installed, so it has snap support installed out of the box, like you'd expect. What I'm going to do now is do a reboot, we'll get a fresh RAM reading, and then we'll sort of wrap up the video there. I think my main issue with a lot of these Ubuntu-based distributions that come out is that I don't think they differentiate themselves too much. I mean, even in the installers, all the Ubuntu branding and everything's still there, I think, you know change the brand in a bit on the installer and things like that, just to sort of make it feel a bit fresh. Right, so the RAM we are using, the Conkey says it's about 860. Let's just open up HTOP as well. It should be exactly the same. Yep, so 843, 830 megabytes of boot. 700 now, it's dropping. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be generous and say about 770 megabytes. 706, now we're gonna stick at 770 megabytes RAM at idle boot. Uh, CPU utilization is what it should be. Let's close that. Um, I think I'm going to pretty much wrap it up there to be honest I don't think there's too much for me to really dig into here that you haven't seen on the channel but that's been Voyager the Gnome Edition thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one bye bye